So I said to Howard, what do you expect me to do? Sit home and darn your socks? What do we all have money for? Why do we keep servants? No, darling. You don't keep them long. God knows. It's yours, Peggy. Isn't it, Mrs. Potters? I opened my four spades. Second hand you did. and went down a thousand. Peggy, my pet, you can't afford it. I can too, Sylvia. I'm not a pauper. Well, if your bridge doesn't improve, you soon will be. Shut up, <laughs> Sylvia. She's only playing till Mary comes down. But, Jane, what is Mrs. Haynes doing up there? It's that lingerie woman you sent her, Mrs. Oh, Fowler. I didn't expect her to buy anything. I was just trying to get rid of the creature. Peggy bid. Oh, mine? Bye. She won't concentrate. Bye. She's in love, bless her. After the child's been married as long as you, girl, she may be able to concentrate on vital matters like bridge. Another lecture on the modern woman. At the drop oh. of a hat, Bye. Well, I consider myself a perfectly good wife. I've sacrificed a lot for Howard Fowler. Two spades. I devote as much time to my children as any of my friends. Except Mary. Oh, well, Mary. Of course. Mary's an exception to us all. Quite right. Peggy? Two. No trumps. Oh. oh, Edith, not again! Oh, oh, it's, oh it's that morning sickness. Oh, I heave the whole darn day. This is positively the last time I go through this lousy business. Four spades. You know, if men had to bear babies, there'd never, never be more than one child in a family, and he'd be a boy. <laughs> oh. I wish I were having a baby. Mm, babies cost money. You'd better learn to play winning bridge. <laughs> oh, honestly, Edith, why didn't you show a slam? Oh, I've got to unswallow. Oh, wait till you've spawned four, Peggy. You wish you'd never seen a pair of pants. Poor, frightened, bewildered Madonna. Oh, I'm devoted to Edith Potter, but she does get me down. You'd think she had a hard time. Dr. Briggs says she's like shelling peas. <laughs> 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 Little Howard had to be taken from me with forceps. No pubs, partner. So when Cynthia came, I had a cesarean. You should see my stomach. It's a slam. Are you sure? Dr. King, Peggy? Thanks, dear. Thanks. It's a slam. And the rubber. <laughs> but I've kept my figure. I adore Edith, but I do think it's revolting how she's let herself spread. I must say, I don't blame Phelps Potter for playing around. Does her husband? Well, I do think it's in bad taste for a man to try to make his wife's friends, especially when he's bald and fat. <laughs> I told him once, Phelps Potter, I said, stop trying to paw me. Has it ever occurred to you that I'm Edith's best friend? The thought never crossed his mind. Oh, well, you can't really blame him. Men have no conscience below their belts. I told him, next time I'm going straight to Edith. And did you? Certainly not. I'd die before I'd be the one to hurt her like that. Besides, I'll say one thing for Edith. She's not as dumb as some of my friends. She's on to her husband. Do you think he's on to her? What do you mean? If he could only hear her talk about him. Listen, Peggy, do we know how men talk about us when we're not around? No, I've heard rumors. Exactly. Peggy, you haven't been married long enough to form a private opinion of your husband. <laughs> well, if I had one, I'd keep it to myself. Do you think I'd tell anybody in the world about the quarrels John and I have over money? I'd be too proud. All over, dear. False alarm. Oh, what happened? Oh, only a slam, dear. You do underbid. Oh, I bet you had me on the pan. Well, I never say behind my friends' backs what I wouldn't say to their faces. <laughs> well, I said you ought to diet. And I intend to, as soon as I pop this one. Besides, I have the most wonderful cook. She was with Mary. She told me that Mary let her go because she was too extravagant. I think the cook that Mary has is too homey. Watercress. I'd just as soon eat my way across a front lawn. <laughs> well, I think Mary's gone off terribly this winter. Mm. Have you noticed these deep lines here? Mm -hmm. oh. Smiling lines, tragic, aren't they? Oh, well, honestly, Nancy, I'm devoted to Mary. But she does get me down sometimes. She's so smug. Smug? Don't you mean happy? Mr. Haynes adores her so. Yes, doesn't he? Oh, you just can't bear it, Sylvia, can you? Bear what? Mary's happiness, it gets you down. Nancy Blake, if I can say one thing for myself, it is that I have never been jealous of another woman. Why should I be jealous of Mary? Because she's contented, contented to be what she is. Which is what? A woman. Uh, oh, <laughs> what in the name of my revolting condition are we? Females. Really, what are you, pet? What nature abhors? I'm a virgin, a frozen asset. Oh, Nancy. Oh. <laughs> I wish I were a virgin again. 
The only fun I ever had was holding out on Phelps. <laughs> oh, Nancy, you ought to thank God every night. You don't have to make sacrifices for some man. Oh, I wish I could make a little money writing the way you do, Miss Blake. If you wrote the way that I do, that's just what you'd make. Mm, you're not exactly a popular author, are you, dear? Not with you. Well, good news, Sylvia. I finished my book, and once again, I'm about to leave your midst. Oh, I wish we could afford to travel. But where do you go this time, Miss Blake? Africa. Shooting. Well, darling, I can't say I blame you. I'd rather face a tiger any day than the sorts of things the critics said about your last book. 